Grace is God's unmerited favor. Grace is God favoring you. Where? Where? I've seen folk with a t-shirt, right? Uh, I think it says, uh, you're a child of, you're a child of God, but I'm his favorite. Is that how the word? Did I say that shirt? Yeah. Am I almost saying that? Is that, is that how the word? <laughs> the shirt suggests the idea, I, I'm God's favorite child. Do you want to be God's favorite? Hmm. What do you think it means to be the favorite of God? See, we think, we think with secular minds. Right. I, I want to be God's favorite child. And, and, and I think if I'm God's favorite child, I have all the cars I want. I have all the money I want. I have all the friends I want. Everybody's going to love me. I'm God's favorite child. And because I'm God's favorite child, I get all the stuff I want. I don't have no illness. I don't have no pain. My life is wonderful because I'm God's favorite child. Do you know what it means to be a favorite child of God? Job was a favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Rare, rare. Yeah. The devil came and said, God asked Satan, what, what, what are you doing? Oh, I, you know what I mean? I'm going to and fro. See what I can tell? Basically, God says, uh, have you noticed my favorite? The devil said, yeah, I know he's a favorite. You got to protect him. God says, see, when God calls you his favorite, he's basically saying, have you noticed the one I can trust? Well, well, yes, sir. Yeah. Have you met the one who can go through hell and not leave me? Yes. Have you met the one who knows what it means to trust me no matter what they got to face? Have you considered Job, because Job is a man, he's a favorite of mine, because he can take the pressure. All right, all right. Do you want to be a favorite? <laughs> the apostles said they were taken and they were beaten. In the, in the book of Acts, they said, they came out and they said this, they were choice. What job of choice? I heard that the, the, we all brought in the question. You have the Sanhedrin brother. They asked us questions about our belief. And we stood for the Lord. And they took us and they pulled our wits. And they beat us. And we walked out praising God. Yay! Yay! Right. Have y'all lost your mind? <laughs> that God thought we were worth trusting yes, yes. to get beaten yes, and not quit. Yes, God says to Paul, you're my favorite. Mm -hmm. I'm going to allow you to have great heights your minds cannot imagine. Yeah. All right. However, I trust you Yes, sir. I will not put upon you any more than you can bear. Mm -hmm. I will let you go through hurt. I will let you go through pain. I will touch your life. I will mold you. I will strengthen you. I am going to use you, but I can't use you and keep you safe. Well. I can only use you if I can open you up to some pain. Amen. God will take you. And he will bless you yes. by using it. Yes, sir. God said to Paul, my favoring you is enough for you. Knowing that I look upon you as somebody I trust. God, the question of the hour is can God trust you? Can he trust you to go through pain? Can he trust you to be broke without a, without a dime? Can he trust you to not have no money? Can he trust you to have folk talk about you? Can he trust you to have your feelings hurt? Can he trust you to go through trauma? Can he trust you to get sick? Can he trust you to go through all the junk that life can give you and not lose your faith? Can he trust you? Because if he can't trust you, Amen. Come on. he tells Paul, my grace is all you're going to need. I want you, I am using you right now. And if you understand my hand in your life, 
that you ain't got to worry about nothing. I ain't saying it's going to be all easy. I'm not saying you're not going to cry. You are going to cry some night. You are going to get hurt at times. Folks, I'm not going to understand you. But I want you to realize you got to learn to hold to my hand. I know what I'm doing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got to trust God where he is right now. My grace is all you need. Yes, sir. Being in my favor is all you need. I'm letting you go through stuff. Because I trust you. And he says, and I can't even deal with this. My grace is sufficient for you. And my not just, not just grace is, my grace is sufficient. Yeah. Yeah. My power right. is right. enhanced yeah. when it touches yeah. your weakness. You got to get to a place where you accept your own limitations. God knows what you can go through. Amen. He's trying to test you. He's trying to get you to a place. And the reality is God is not going to stop until he break you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have, have had to face situations in life, and, and I, I, I believe in planning. I, I, I put together plan A, B, C, and then D. I don't like D, but I'd rather have a D than have nothing. So plan A falls apart. That's all right. You know, I, I thought it might fall apart, but here's plan B. Plan B falls apart. But, you know, okay. I thought that would have really thought those two would work, but I guess, you know, it's going to be all right. Now i got plan C, plan C, it fall apart. Lord, well, I hated plan B, but at least it's a plan. Plan B fall apart. I know. You, you ever get to a place where you have money? <laughs> Check ain't gonna be for another few days. Ain't nobody left to borrow the money from. You borrow all you can borrow. Isn't you know, that right, baby? You never borrow. I'm gonna borrow from you then, okay? <laughs> you at a place now where you really just, I, I don't know what to do. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm out. I, I don't have nobody to call. I, I don't have nobody to I mean, I'm, I'm out. What would what I do? I've had so many occasions when all my plans fall apart, and I just said, it's going to fall apart. Can God come up? Do something I ain't even thought about. You ever get a check? Praise the Lord. You ever get a check? You ever get a check in the mail you didn't see coming? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lord, I don't know what we're going to do next week. This is so bad. What's going on? This is yours, come on. We will pay, what? The point is that God doesn't act until you figure you failed. He does his best work in your weakness. Yes, Lord. But you don't know you're weak yeah. until your plan fails. Yeah. Until all your maneuvering and all your ideas and all your attempts have come to the place and you sit down and I don't know what else. Lord, I prayed, I tried. I don't know what to do. And then God said, well, thank you. <laughs> By time you got out my way. Because you will not allow the hand of God to work until you come to a place in your life when you don't know what else to do but say, Lord, take over. And that's why you're strong. You get strong when you know you weak. But as long as you're trying to fix it, you're going to just tear it up most. That's it. That's it. And God is extremely patient with you. That's the beginning. I've got 35 years, but you've been around for a long time. Good, good. You got some more trouble. Good, good. Don't have it right. Work it, baby. Work it, work it all. You're crying, poor thing. You try to get it. <laughs> and you get to the place you're sick of trying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to ask God. For, and that's why a child of God don't even work. You can't, a child of God can't worry. Right. You know, 
worry is? Worry is what you do when you think you, have, you got control. Yeah. You really think you can do something? That's why you worry. Right? Maybe if I got up earlier, maybe if I had got a second and third job, or, you know, maybe if I had got home early, if I had got home later, maybe if my friends would have called me, if I would have bought another kind of phone company, maybe if I would have got a different car, man. you can worry, well, I don't know what's going to happen when I get in this event, and they tell me I close the job next year, maybe you might be dead by next year, but I, I, how are we going to make it next year, I, I, how are we going to make it next year, 2014 coming so fast, I can't get no one, ain't nobody going to hire me, I go. Why are you trying to figure out 2014 you can't figure out today? We worry about things we have no control over. Because we think we have control. So God says, I need to humble you. So I will let the devil knock you out. Until you get so tired of getting knocked down, Amen. you stop fighting. And even an atheist, uh, like Paul prayed, there are atheists who say they don't believe in God. Mm-hmm. Get sick enough. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You, you get sick enough. It's like the story of the man was flying in a plane and, the, and uh, he, he leaned over and lost his balance and fell out and, and grabbed the wing, the plane, his own automatic pilot. He's hanging by his hands, looking down. He's an atheist. He shouts out, oh, well. Uh, I don't believe in God, but he's like, get anybody out there? <laughs> anybody out there? And the boy said, I'm here. He, he said, who are you? He said, I'm God. He said, well, can you help me? The boy said, yes. Mm. What must I do? He said, hear my word. I hear you, I hear you. What else must I do? Believe in me. I believe, I believe. What else must I do? Let go of the plane. <laughs> So he shouts back, anybody else up there? 